So let's take a look at number one right here on the class opener. It says a score to 60. And what I've been teaching you guys, whoops, what I've been teaching you guys so far is write down your perfect score number list, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. You create that perfect score number list. That way you realize, hey, there's no perfect score number in here. 60 is not a perfect score number. If it were 64, the answer would be 8. But it's not 64, it's 60. So it's not a perfect score number. You want to rewrite this number with multiplication to get one of these guys, right? So 6 times 10 doesn't work because 6 is not up here, 10 is not up here. So which number would work? 25 times something give you 60? No. 16 times something give you 60? No. 9 times something? 4 times something? Yes. Yeah, 4 times what? 4 times 15. So I say look at that list until you figure out that 4 times 15 is the correct combo. Again, the, the original concept is if, it's, if it doesn't have a perfect score number, if you don't have a perfect score number, rewrite it with multiplication so you could get a perfect score number. Okay? So now you have the square root of that stuff. And, and we know because of our key concept that we're able to split the square root. So the square root of 4 and the square root of 15. And which one of those could you do the square root of 4? So your final answer is 2 square root of 15. Okay, that's the most basic type of simplifying radicals that we've done. And the method that I've shown you so far is to look at this perfect square number list and think of, the, of how you could rewrite this with multiplication so you could get a perfect square number. Um, we also learned that when you have a square root of a fraction, you split that square root, right? So you could start doing this, square root of 20 and the square root of 15. And then you'd have to simplify the square root of 20. It's kind of like having two problems instead of one. You're going to simplify the square root of 20, then simplify the square root of 15, if possible. And then you have to get rid of the radicals in the denominator because you can't leave them down there. You can do that with times, uh, times now, you could multiply, yeah, both top and bottom by the square root of 15 to get rid of the square root. But I put this problem here on purpose because a lot of times we get so used to the rules uh, that we jump right into to applying the rules. But look at the original problem. And is there anything you could do to make it look nicer? Yeah, reduce, reduce 20 over 15 by 5, right? So let's, let's do that. If I reduce 20 over 15, if I reduce by 5, reduce by 5, what kind of new fraction am I going to get? I'm going to get 4 over, 4 over 3. And now when I split it, it'll be the square root of 4 over the square root of 3. And that's pretty easy. It's, it's a heck of a lot easier than this guy up here, right? The square root of 4 is what? Two. See, it's beautiful, right? So you end up with a nice, beautiful two up on top. But you still have the score to three on the bottom. And one of the things that we've learned this week is that we cannot, we don't want a square root in the denominator. So let me rewrite it. Two square to three. I want to get rid of the square to three on the bottom. How do I do that? Uh, multiply. multiply both top and bottom by that same radical value. Uh, why is that? Because uh, the square to three times the square root of 3 will just become 3. So up here, 2 times square root of 3, that's 2 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3. It's really a square root of 9, but the square root of 9 takes you back to 3. That's why we wrote down that rule in our notes that when you multiply a radical, a square root value with itself, it gives you just the value, no more square root. Are we cool with number 2? All right. How about number 3? What do you guys think of number 3? Any thoughts on how to approach this? So one option is to go 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, six times, and you get a huge number, right? And you would write, rewrite this radical with a huge number in there instead of 3 to the 6. I, but that's, that's not going to be fun. That's going to be am recording a ginormous this number. And thinking of what, which number of these could I multiply to get that huge number, it's not going to be an easy task, right? So let's use one of the truths that we learned this week which was the square root could really be rewritten as the power of what? Half, right? The square root could be re re rewritten as the power of half. Check out how easy this becomes, guys. Instead of, instead of the square root of 3 to 6, I'm going to write 3 to the 6 to the power of what? Half. And we know that a power to a power, what happens? You multiply them. Power to a power, you multiply from the rules of exponents. So what's your answer? 3 to the 3rd. And what is 3 to the 3rd? 
That's 27. That's your final answer right there. There's really nothing confusing about it if you know all the different truths that we've been covering, all the different facts about simplifying radicals, right? Right here, the square root becomes a power of one half. Power to a power multiply ends up with three. The square root could always be the power of one half. And, and that ultimately ends up just dividing the exponent by two. The six divided by two is three. And you could actually do three to the third. All right, guys. You, uh, so what I want to do today is give you an alternative method to simplifying the square root of 60. Instead of thinking of the perfect square numbers, which a lot of people don't like doing, if you're not good at multiplying and thinking of these big numbers, then you might want to try this new method I'm about to show. Check it out. We're going to compare the different ways of simplifying radicals. We're going to do the original method that we always do. What's that original method? We're going to rewrite with multiplication to get a perfect square number if we don't have one. And the new method is going to be the prime factorization method, also known as the factor tree method. Okay? So how would I tackle this guy right here? Well, I would start by writing down my perfect square number list. 32 is not up there. If it were the square root of 36, my answer would be 6. But 32 is not a perfect square number, so we're going to rewrite it with multiplication to get a perfect square number. And 4 will work, but is, will 9 work? Uh, yeah. Will 16 work? Yeah. 16. So I always use the biggest perfect square number possible. So we're going to have 16 times 2. And from there, we split the root. We split the root. So I could do the square root of 16, which is 4. And the square root of 2 stays the square root of 2. And that's it. You can't really do anything else with this 4. It's a nice number 4. It's not the square root of 4. Are you guys with me? If you understand that, that's great. If you're good at simplifying radicals by thinking of this list and using multiplication to rewrite it to get a perfect square number, that's great. Let's say you're struggling with that. Then let's do it with this other method. 32. Forget about perfect square numbers. Just what times what is 32? What comes to the first thing at the top of your head? What times what is 32? Four and eight. Four and eight. So I want to do a factor tree. 32, I wrote it as four and eight. Four, I'm going to rewrite it as two times two. Eight, I'm going to rewrite it as what? Four times two or two times four. And what else could I break down? The four, I break that down to two times two. Now, check this out, guys. Here's the, the, uh, the important part of, of this alternate method. Everything that pairs up, well, let's first understand what we have. We have a 2, a 2, a 2, a 2, and a 2. Everything that pairs up, I'm going to write it once outside the square root. Okay, so what paired up? Check this out. I have a pair of 2s. That's a 2 out there. Do I have any more pairs? Yeah, I have another pair of 2s. That's another 2 out there. And what about this 2 right here that's left over? That stays in the box. So what do I have on the outside? I have 2 times 2. That's really going to be 4 squared of 2. And that's the same answer I got over here, just using a different method. Okay, so if you're not really good at thinking of multiplying with bigger numbers, and like, yeah, you might know. I mean, even if you, even if you wanted to, you could take that 32 and say... Okay, 32 is really uh, maybe 2 times 16. And then 16 is really 2 times 8. And 8 is really 2 times 4. And 4 is really 2 times 2. And the same thing, you're pairing up those two. So there's a 2 on the outside. You're pairing up these two. That's another 2 on the outside. And this 2 is left over on the inside. So that's really 2 times 2 times square root of 2. So that's really 4 square root of 2. So there's an alternate method to writing this list and to thinking of multiplication. What do I prefer? I prefer the, the first method I showed you. I like thinking of perfect square numbers. I'm a math teacher. I don't know. Maybe it's because uh, I'm good at multiplying. Uh, so I like th thinking of the perfect square numbers and looking at that number and trying to break it down with one of these. But if you don't want to struggle with that, you could try this method of breaking it down however you want. 4 times 8 or 2 times 16, whatever you want. Let's do some more problems. Check it out. The square root of 20. Okay, so once again, I'm going to think of my perfect square numbers, and I'm like, oh, 4 will work. Okay, so 4 times 5 is 20. I'm going to split the root. 
What's my final answer? 2 square root of 5. Okay? If you understand that, that's great. But just for funsies here, let's practice doing it with the factor tree. Okay? And remember, once you do a factor tree, whatever pairs up is going to go on the outside. Whatever doesn't pair up stays on the inside. Okay? So 20, instead of 4 times 5, a lot of people think 10 times 2. Okay? And then what? What else could you break down? 5 times 2. Okay? And then, and that's it. So what do we really have? We have a 5, a 2, and a 2. What paired up? These 2s. So those 2s are going to go on the outside. And what stays on the inside? The 5. Well, the 10 ten, is no longer 10. The 10 became 5 and 2. So you got to look at your bottom, whatever you have left over on the outside of your factor tree, that's what you have left over. So it's an alternate method. You might like it better. Go for it if you want. Let's try another one. 48. Thinking of perfect square numbers. I know 4 times 12 works, but a higher one, 9 times something, no, 16 times something, give me 48. Yeah, 16 times 3 gives me 48, right? So that's what I'm going to write. 16 is a perfect square number times 3. So when I split it, 16 is really 4, and the square root of 3 is the square root of 3, and that's it. So if you're comfortable with the first method, this method that I showed you, great, that's awesome. You don't have to use this other method, but some people struggle, so... Some people don't want to think about perfect square numbers, and they just say, okay, 48, and they know that 48 is really what? 12 times, 4. 12 times 4 or 4 times 12 or 6 times 8. It doesn't matter. Like, whatever pops up in your head, you could write that down. So if I go 6 times 8 and continue breaking down, what's, what's a 6 going to break down to? 3 and a 2. 2 and a 3. Okay, 3 and a 2. And how about the 8? What does that break down to? 4 and a 2. Okay, and then what else? Two and two, right? And so I like to underline everything that we have at the bottom of our tree. We have a two, a three, a two, a two, and a two. And now let's start pairing up. So I have these two that pair up. That's going to be one, two on the outside. Here's my radical. Uh, and then I have another pair of twos right here. So that's another two on the outside. And what do I have left over? I have left over this 3 right here. So the 3 is on the inside. So my final answer is 2 times 2, that's 4 on the outside, square root of 3. 4 square root of 3. Same exact answer. Does it take a little bit longer? It might. I don't know. Like I said, I prefer the first method. If you like this, go for it. Okay? Let's try another. 128. In order for me to do perfect square numbers, to break it down with perfect square numbers, I need to see my list. So when you look at your list, it's pretty easy. What number are you going to use? 64. 64 times 2 is 128, right? So 64 times 2 is 128. Split the root, you'll get 8 square root of 2, and you're done. Of course, without this list, I wouldn't be able to, to see that it's 64 times 2, okay? Prime factorization, you could just start breaking it down, and a lot of us don't know what times what is 128. We don't know. But uh, we could at least divide it in half, right? So 2 times what is 128? 64. 64. It's the same thing, right? But then you could continue going 64. You could go 2 times what? What's half of, what's half of uh, 64? 32. Or you could have said 8 times 8. I mean, it's whatever you want. Right? What's the point of that? I'm just showing you an alternate method. 32 is really 2 times what? 2 times 16. So if you know how to divide by 2, you could continue breaking down with the factor tree. 16 is really what? 8 times 2 or 2 times 8. Okay. And then 8 is really what? 4 times 2 or 2 times 4. And then 4 breaks down 2 times 2. That's, that's a lot of 2s, man. Right? But check it out. Here's our answer. We have a pair of twos. That's one two out there. We have another pair of twos. That's another two out there. And we have yet another pair of twos. That's another two out there. And we have this leftover two right here. So there's a leftover two in there. Obviously, I'd go with the first method of thinking of my perfect square numbers and doing it this way than doing it this way. 
But I'm just letting you know it works. 2 times 2 times 2, that's really 8. Square root of 2 on the inside stays. Okay? Anyway, I hope that kind of helps.